Oh, we were just going to say a quick prayer uh, before we begin. We're doing lesson four, No Wicked Thing in um, Believer's Authority. And uh, I'm going to just do a quick review of last week. We did half the lesson last week, and um, we're going to do the other half today. So does somebody want to pray us in? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord God, with our hearts and our, and our arms open to you, Lord God. We ask that you would uh, 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 sup with us this morning. Give us um, the portions, Lord God, of your will, of your will, your wisdom, and your understanding in our lives. Let us be uh, good um, students of your word this morning so that we will be um, uh, uh, iron, shopping iron amongst one another, that we will uh, go forth from this place, Lord God, and, and to be better servants on your behalf. We call these things done now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. That was great. Okay, so we're going to start here, blinded by the truth. Now, I'm going to start here with the outline, though, uh, from last week. I'm just going to do the outline real quick to give us a quick overview of the first half. All right, so uh, we talked about a thought becomes your own when you begin speaking it out of your mouth. And in Matthew 6.31, I'm going to go there real quick. It says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? And so uh, it, we're supposed to be, let me just look at that again. Yeah, it says we're just supposed to take no thought on the things of um, that are uh, more, not of the world, but um, someone help me here. We're supposed to be thinking and talking about the things of God, focusing on the to trust him too. Yeah. Uh, yep, absolutely. So here's a PowerPoint um, slide about this. Let me jump over to it here. Because it's talking about take no thought saying. In other words, you, you when you say something out your mouth, you just took ownership of that thought. Yes. You, that, yeah. you just took ownership of that thought when you start speaking it. Yep. So speaking negative thoughts, uh, you can't keep your thoughts from coming across your mind, but you can keep them from taking those thoughts as your own. If you don't say it, it won't be yours. So again, we have to take our thoughts captive because before we speak, you know, we're thinking. So we want to be careful of what we're doing here. So let me go back to the lesson then. Um, don't know why that happened. Just one second. Well, while you're doing that, I was thinking too that as a reminder that you some thoughts will come in your head that you don't want to take ownership of because it's it's not like we could we ourselves cannot stop every thought that comes into our head just based on living in the world. But based on this that that verse, take no thought saying we take ownership of those thoughts once we make them come alive with our words. Yeah, well. exactly. I, I like to add, I like yep. to add that, um, you know, if we maintain our focus, if we maintain our focus, we, we won't uh, have our, uh, uh, this, this Im implosion going on in our mind and it coming out of our mouth that, that um, if we're motivated by, uh, what uh, God says, we're motivated by the way that we want things to be, not as they are, not as the way that they are, but as the way that they that they that we want them to be, and and not lose focus. Then we would not, we would have, we we would create the world that we desire, and and we won't allow our, our ourselves to be led off on a a path that leads away from our vision and our focus in what God wants for our lives. Absolutely. I mean, if we have our renewed minds, right, our minds yeah. will be full of the word of God. And so mm -hmm. we'll be, have less battle of the mind. You know, so many preachers I've heard, and, and it's the truth, it's biblical, the battle of, uh, for our lives is really in our minds. You know, yeah. do we have the mind of Christ or do we have our own mind? And then right. the other thing is, uh, I was just thinking about our minds um, when, um, oh, you know, we won't use so much energy captivating 
taking every thought captive because our thoughts will be more pure, you know, so less energy, right? Because it mm -hmm. takes time to process your thoughts before you speak, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. if you're constantly, um, you know, when I first became a Christian, I had to be watching a lot of my thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, and taking them captive and casting them down if they weren't mm -hmm. good, you know, so. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on to A here. It says, Satan passes thoughts, feelings, and attitudes across our hearts and minds. Yep, he is the prince of this world at this time. He does have the uh, power to be, um, you know, um, around us and, and even speaking to our mind because our minds have three kinds of thoughts, our minds. And Charmaine, you're still listening. Is that correct? She said goodbye. Oh, did she? Yeah, okay. she wrote a little thing. There. Okay. All right, well, you guys... Tell me, tell me about this. I have learned that there's three kinds of thoughts. I don't have a Bible verse, but to back it up right now. So hold me accountable, okay? okay. Three kinds of thoughts. Our own thoughts, the thoughts of God, and Satan's thoughts. Right, right. That sums okay. it up pretty much. <laughs> and, and, you know, the thing is, um, they all sound like our own voice. I mean, not all of them, but most of them. Our thoughts always sound like it's in our own voice. So that's why we have to stop, take them captive. And mm -hmm. think about, is that positive, negative? Is it God? Is it mm -hmm. my own thought? And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, one thing is that um, I think we know, and you guys can back me up on this too, or comments is good, you know? We have an hour and a half, right? So mm -hmm. if we're thinking and we, come, we have these thoughts uh, ruminating, we can determine if they're ours or not because we kind of know our own thoughts. Most of the time, we know what we're thinking about. Um, and so... You know, we know how we think. We know ourselves pretty well, right? So when we have those godly thoughts, usually they're much better. They're much higher than my own thoughts. That's how I know it's God. Um, mm -hmm. What about you guys? And then, of course, anything negative or contrary to what the word says, I know is from Satan. So what do you guys think on that? Well, Trish, sometime, sometime I'll, I'll get into the flesh. I'll get into the flesh. And I, I start looking for what I'm saying to make sense. I'm looking for what I'm saying to have some found. I'm looking for foundation for what I'm saying. I'm looking for foundation for what I'm saying. And 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 mm -hmm. what I have to do is, I have to automatically return to to go, seeking God and what God would say in the matter, what His Word says in the matter. That's and good. and 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 that situation uh, become uh, small to me. But when, when I'm in the flesh, it's bigger than I am. I, I'm, I'm seeking to find foundation by my means, not by God's means. Yeah, that's no, good. That's right. Where's that thought coming from? And yeah. what kind is it? Yeah, absolutely. Flesh, yeah. And it's so, it helps us so much. Okay, number B, if you don't say it, then it's not yours. That's right. And can someone explain what happens when it becomes our our thoughts okay when we take ownership by speaking them out now we've spoken something and there's power in what we say right because god created everything through the spoken word let there be light let there be the heavens let there be the earth so the spoken word as, as most of us have studied in charmaine's classes early on you know it's like we have power in the word we've heard it from the pulpits right there's yeah. power so when we say it it becomes ours right now and, and i'm just going to think say this that they become our our responsibility you know, so if we've been speaking something that's not nice to someone, uh, we have to quickly take take um, a quick repentance on that, you know, and say, hey, I messed up. I didn't mean, please forgive me. I didn't mean to say that to you, you know, or, you know, um, they become ours. We create our life with our mouth, like Edward was saying. And so um, it, we have responsibility over them. Does anybody else have any comments on that, how that works? Why do they become ours? I, oh, I was thinking of something else, but it's okay. I'll share it later. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please share it though. Okay, number C. You need to take on this attitude. I refuse to speak forth anything contrary to what I'm believing for. Mm. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just like Andrew is, or uh, well, Andrew says that <laughs> all the time. That's him here. But it, like Edward was saying, yeah, we want to we want to create our lives for what we um what we want to see in our lives, right? Number two, you need to be constantly aware of the truth that your words are either releasing life or releasing death. Mm -hmm. Set a watch over your mouth and speak life. That's Psalms 143.1, because you will eat the fruit of it. So the fruit that our words produce, we're going to eat. 
So if we're speaking strife, we're going to have strife and we're going to have the consequences of those. Can, can I share here, Trish? Please. Yeah. So what I got out of that kind of the revelation when I was meditating on that verse you just read mm -hmm. is what is it that we that a fruit contains? Um, first of all, it can fuel us. And what it does is if you aren't doing spiritual fruit, you're not speaking spiritual words, you can fuel death, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can feel the flesh, which is, says in one scripture is diabolical and wicked. So <laughs> devil. You know, I yeah. have Lisa, Lisa isms now too. <laughs> and the second thing that I get out of it is that it contains seeds. Yes. And those it seeds reproduce will bear fruit. Themselves. It will multiply exponentially if we let it take root. Right, so right. We need to get on it and, mm -hmm. and clamp it down and take authority over it right away if we start to give in to something that we know is going to produce negative fruit in us or in right. someone else also. We need to yeah. move it right away when we realize that if we've spoken out of turn. That's right. And when you say we got to get on it right away, that means you need to cut off the, um, the fruit of it. Yeah. And you can take yeah. your authority and just, you know, like, I've had to say, Satan, you have no power. You have nothing over this conversation. You are bound from acting upon this conversation. And in Jesus' name, that's it. He can't act on it. So it cannot be uh, no more no more reproduction of that word or words. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's see. PowerPoint 22, 23. I'll go there in just a minute. It says here in Proverbs 18, 20, and 21, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his, of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled death and life are in the power of the tongue and that they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof so just like you were saying lisa there it is right there mm -hmm. and we shall eat the fruit thereof i'm gonna jump over to powerpoint now and let's see what that has to say charmaine's awesome powerpoints these are so good okay take no thought saying so satan passes seeds thoughts feeling and attitudes through our minds right well through our flesh because feelings are, you know, as a result of our thoughts. We must prevent these seeds from taking root, beginning to grow, and producing the negative crop. So we need to cut them off. If you don't say it, then it's not yours. So you can't be held accountable for it. Because, you know, inside our minds, we're working with our mind all the time, right? And so we decide how we're going to live based on what we say. So verbalizing and speaking forth these negative things, they become yours and begin releasing this negative power in your life. So pretty good stuff. Very good stuff. Uh, Trish. Yes. Um, I was thinking that uh, Lisa was speaking about the fruit and the seeds and all kinds of things. Um, and and you, you were talking about, the, you know, creating out of our mouth, you know, what we say. So would, would, would everyone agree that our our experience as as people of God is going to be uh, uh, changing, um, uh, 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 changing uh, bad situations into good situations. That's going to be our life work. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. When we put the word over situations for our own lives, or someone else's in our prayer time, or laying hands on them, praying with them. Um, even when you're standing in a situation and you know, there's some evil environments there, you know, you can be actively speaking, you know, quietly, perhaps if you don't want to be heard by the people around you, but you can take authority over those rooms. I like, if I walk into a room and I can sense, you know, that the atmosphere is kind of demonic or something, you know, our spirit, our inner witness will tell us what's going on a lot of times and you can speak. And you can come against what's going on pretty quickly and change that atmosphere. And so, Amen. yes, absolutely. Anybody else? That's perfect the way you said that. Because I, yeah. I know that, that that's the Holy Spirit. That inner and flow and, and you got a lot of that, Trish. You could tell when, but when you get into the word and you, this is a process that people, yep. um, you know, the more you get into reading the Bible, the more you get into going to Bible studies and staying faithful and, watching your every move and every step you learn things and then you have to take accountability and that's a decision that you make because 
you know, as far as being a disciple, part of discipleship is, you know, the word to me, disciple is also someone who's, um, who has responsibilities, you know, to disciple others, right? Yeah. That's part of what we're doing. We're learning to be disciples. Yeah. And, and the disciples who walked with Jesus for those years, you know, they were out there and they were, they were doing just what Jesus was doing. Remember they were casting out demons. They were, they were changing the, the world around them for sure. Yeah. yeah they had to learn that though. And that, that's, yeah, it's that's why process. people, I know it's not, it's not like, you know, it's, it's going to happen overnight. You really actually have to take the steps and you have to do, it's not that God doesn't love you based on your works, but it does edify you and it helps you. The more you read, the more you worship and glorify God, the more you talk with thought and compassion toward people as opposed to just that. (laughs) Yeah. And and so when you say it's a process, it's studying, like you're saying, coming on Bible studies, reading the word yourself, sitting with Jesus, asking for revelation, Lord, what does this mean? You know, what do you want me to do today? And then, but practice, 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 practice. That process includes practice. You know, you think of kids in grade schools, right? Well, they're learning things, but then they have to practice. They have to recite their ABCs. Um, They have to talk in class and answer questions. And, you know, so, you know, they have to do presentations in school. That's why, you know, this process of, you know, it says faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So that's, um, our our voices are so powerful in our process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, testing, testing, we, we're not going to be able to avoid it. Did we're you say, be, we, what, what word, casting? We, we, testing? Testing. Testing. We're gonna, testing. Yeah, we, we're not going to be able to avoid it. And, and, and so, right, right. So, so we would have to find common ground. We would have to find comfort in, in Jesus in, in those trying times, in those when those fiery dots are coming, uh, that that we would have to uh, 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 anchor down and and profess, thus says the Lord, in those situations, uh, you know, and 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 not be uh, 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 not um, um, uh, what you call it, uh, panic or or become frustrated to the point where we um, are moved uh, by the. The, the the attacks of the enemy right. yeah we, when we, yeah when you come up against those darts it's um you know uh, we don't have to have fear because we have the word behind it i mean put uh, to it and we have that confidence the more we study all this you know i think that com- our confidence builds you know and we get more and more confident in in using the word and even if sometimes i've had to go to the bathroom and speak mm-hmm. things out loud, like in work Amen. situations. Yeah. 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 And, and I've gone in early and laid hands on the desks and, and prayed the spirit, the Holy Spirit into mm-hmm. those places and anoint them That's because awesome. I was working in a very uh, worldly place one time for, mm-hmm. for a number of years. So, mm-hmm. all right, all good. Let's, let's keep going. Every word you say is, is produces seed after its own kind. You can't keep a problem from coming. We will be tested, right? But you mm-hmm. can keep those problems from dominating you by speaking forth the right positive word that's word of god oriented things so number three in this spiritual battle satan takes advantage of the words we say oh you know what that's it on the review i was only supposed to do one and two from last week so we can go to the rest of the lesson now so i'm going to jump over to this one this is where we're going to start do you guys see blinded to the truth on my screen yeah okay all right so we're going to go to teachers 3a oh this we're going to read this then we'll jump over and talk a question or discuss a question okay in this spiritual battle satan takes advantage of the words we say so for by the words thou shall be justified and by thy words thou shall be condemned so justified here means made righteous and condemned means made wrong that's matthew 12 37 so let's go to teachers 3a see Can what I- that- See? Oh, yeah, just, go ahead. I just was wondering, Trish, what does that mean to you? That's I mean, Jesus talking. So I think we need to think about that. You'll be condemned, you'll be justified. So is that yeah. going to come in the question? Not sure. 
haven't read it all the way through this yet. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, let's go to the questions and see if it answers it. Otherwise, yeah. it's certainly okay, comments. So good. Let's go here. So let's go to T3A first. All right, read Matthew 12, 37, Ephesians 2, Corinthians. In this spiritual battle, we'll read them in just a second. Who takes advantage of the words we say? Oh, it's right there, Satan. Satan yeah. takes advantage, yeah. So uh, let me go to Ephesians 2, 1 and 3. Let's see if it's in our scriptures today. No, or neither is the Corinthians. Does somebody want to look those up? We'll get a little more um, word on it for us. And uh, we'll come back yeah. to you. Just let me know when you're ready. Which scripture do you need? Um, Matthew 12, 37. We just read that one, didn't we? I think that's Ephesians the one I read. 2, 1, 3. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 1, and 3. It's in the, it's in the scripture list. Um, oh, is it? Yeah, I mean, but it's down toward the middle bottom. There it is. Okay, somebody yeah. want to read that for us? And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespass and sins, wherein in times past he walked according, pardon me just a second, uh, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, I gotta look at one, <laughs> that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's another word that I think for discipleship is, you know, um, obedience to I yeah. always think of that when I think of discipleship you have to be obedient to because a disciple is someone who follows a master or a teacher Correct. sorry just a side note no, among going. whom also <laughs> among whom also we had our conversation our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others so I, this thing is chock full with wisdom here and, and just, um, it just fills my heart with joy it's just to read this one because it just says, you know, okay, we've been quickened. That means we now have the spirit of God living in us. We've made Jesus our Lord and Savior, right? And mm -hmm. so we have the whole witness of the Holy Spirit in us. Okay. And we were dead. We were dead. And down here, it says children of wrath. That's who we are by nature. But now... And we used to walk according to that nature in the world, according to the prince of the power, that's Satan. He has the power over the earth right now to be around tormenting people. And now, and he works with those two children of disobedience, even Christians who are disobedient to the word and, and things like that. But among us, we all had our conversations in, in the past over the lust of the flesh too, fulfilling our own desires. So this Ephesians 2, 1, I, I told you I got filled with joy by it, right? The reason I got filled with joy is because now I know so much more. Now I know how, how to overcome all of this, you know, and it's a process like we were talking about, but um, I really, I really like, cause it's laid out right there. That's who we were before we found Christ right there, you know, cause I think new believers, you know, as they're reading the word and they see this, it's like, man, I was like, a, I was a case. I was a piece of work, you know, and that's true. So. Um, now everybody's at varying degrees of that too, you know? So yeah. uh, let's go back then to that question again. Um, hey, Trish. And, yeah. I like this part in first Corinthians six eleven, and it gives a big list of all the terrible things that people do in the world. And, and then it, including fornication, murders, homosexuals. And then it says, and such were some of you, but, <laughs> you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. We have yes. overcome. Yep. Amen. They came the out one. from them and they became separate by the spirit of God and the word Separated, of God. Set apart. Yep. yep. So let's read this one. Second Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So that that kind of redeems what we were looking at in this, this big one over here, up there, you know, but lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon us. So that's the redemption. Redemption Jesus gained for us, died for us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Keith. That's yeah. why it's very. That's why it's very important that 
Uh, when we pray for believers, the, the scripture that you have just read, yeah, we, we, we pray that that um, you take authority over the, the deception that they're experiencing in their mind mm. and that the Lord will send laborers and persons to minister unto them. Yeah. Yes, that they can be delivered. Yeah, because we don't know if we might be the only one that prays for them in their lives, right? right? Yeah, you can pray a prayer that will change, lead to change. We, like you're saying, we might be the only gospel they ever hear. Yeah, at that, at that point in their lives, you know. That's why our response is imp very important. That we can pray for them, and also if we have the opportunity to sow the word, to witness, do it right? in love. Yeah, and share our testimony if they'll listen. Yep. So here again, uh, justified is being made righteous. Uh, that's when we receive Christ and then being condemned made our, our words can, you know, keep us in that carnality. And certainly people who don't know Jesus, they, they can be condemned forever. So let's go to question five then. Question five, according to Psalm 141, three, the palmist asked the Lord to keep what? Let me see if we have that one, 141, three. It was um, mentioned. Yep, there it is. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Mm -hmm. So we can ask for help in this process. Right. The Lord is our helper, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's basically giving authority over your tongue to the Holy Spirit, I think. Right. Right. That's giving probably something we have to do. We should do daily. <laughs> Don't you think? Yes. Submit our mouths to the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Give him to me over it. Hmm? Hi. Can you tell me what scripture you guys read after Ephesians 2, 1 through 3? Yes. That was here in our list here. It was 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Thank you. Sure. All right, so we're going to move down now. When we don't realize just how important our words are, we speak forth foolishness, doubt, unbelief, and other things that allow Satan to devour, devour us because we let down our guard. Our commission today to the Gentiles is, uh, well, part of Paul's commission and ours as well, is to turn them from the power of Satan unto God. And we're going to go read Acts 26. And that's exactly what we've been talking about like, you know, we might be that only witness, like Lisa was talking about, and to take the power from Satan away from the Gentiles. Gentiles mean the unsaved people, people who don't know about um, the decision they can make to have Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So Paul's commission from God and ours as well is to um, be a witness. So let's go to question six and seven. Wait one sec. I think I was going to read Acts 26, 18 here first. There it is. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So that's our inheritance. And that is, okay, our inheritance is that we have received forgiveness, everything that we received in the atonement, prosperity, healing, deliverance from the demonic, um, forgiveness, that's all ours, because now we were made whole and pure, which is sanctification by our faith in Jesus. So that's what we want to bring to the Gentiles. Oh, I think I answered the question. Okay, so it shows that when we turn from darkness to light we are turning from the power oh i have to move this hey trish I, I, yeah and I, I think can you make it a little smaller yeah you can, yeah, I can. um there it is okay there we go okay so six yeah. shows that when we turn from darkness to light we are turning from the power of satan unto whom the power of whom god yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. And then, um, oh yeah, screen, read from the scriptures. We did that. Many people don't really realize, recognize that Satan is dominating, exerting power in their lives. They just think it's circumstances, fate, or luck. 
this scripture makes it very clear that they have been under the influence of the devil. This is Ephesians 2, 1 and 3. 1 to 3. Can someone read that for us? I can read it. Wait. Okay. okay. We just read that though. Ephesians 2, 1 and 3. Oh, I did yeah. it off the scripture list. Good. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Denise. So let's go to question eight and nine. Sorry. No, that's fine. Thank you. I mean, it's not bad to hear them again, but. Yeah, I know. I was thinking that. <laughs> So before we were born again, Ephesians 2, 1 and 3 reveals that we were dead in what? Trespasses and sins. Our trespasses and sins. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, I'm not looking at the um, answers. Uh, they're in my, somewhere else. Okay. So that's true. Dead in our trends. There it is. Trespasses. And number nine. What were we by nature? Children of wrath. Uh, right. Amen. Yes, that's right. I mean, not amen to that, but yes, we were. <laughs> yes, we were. Okay. Before we converted to Christ, we were by nature children of Satan. We lived our lives under his influence and dominion, blinded to the truth. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Yes, yeah, Trish. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make emphasis on this part again. That's why it's so important. Sometimes we are ministering to, to, to people, and mm -hmm. then we, we, we normally say, you got to quit smoking. You've got to stop doing this. You've got to stop doing that. And we're not realizing that it's the enemy who is blinding their minds from receiving the truth. And what we should be looking to do is to want to see change from the inside out and not from yeah. the outside in. So when we get the word from the inside, putting it um, in them to, so that we can see the change on the outside, as I said earlier, we should pray, take authority over what is influencing them so that their eyes can be open now to see the change. Right. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. I was thinking in a kind of link to that is that this does not just apply to unbelievers because many times believers can either be hindered by a lie they believed from ah. childhood or they can be deceived because it says even if it were possible, even the elect might be deceived. But if we see that they're deceived and we discern it, we can pray for them, right? Using our authority and also pray in people to help them see the truth. Try to help them see the truth. So, and if they won't listen to us, pray that God will bring in something that someone that speaks their language, you know, their lingo. Yeah. It continues on in 2 Corinthians 4, you know, if you go down to 4, 6, for, and I'll read the, um, the NAS, New American Standard. It says, for God who said, light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So, you know, we have to be the ones shining that light on the people. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. yeah. And yeah, that's, the that's, a, that's a very strong point, um, Dennis, because you're right. So instead of their bickering, 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 bickering and badgering, our actions should 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 show them who Christ is. That is a very important yes. I, I'm thinking of I went on Facebook yesterday and I was looking at a new meeting that's coming up with um, Heidi Baker and Bill Johnson and a whole bunch of really God-fearing people that move in the power of God. And I was so shocked to scroll down and read the comments because there's so many people that sound like they're Christians, but they absolutely are bad-mouthing her and they're saying she's false and, and all of this. And I thought, you know, I found scriptures and I, I, did, I don't usually respond, but I just felt I could not let this go. This whole stream of people not believing in the power of God in this life, you know, 
So I dug, I just got three scriptures and I printed them there. <laughs> <laughs> that was my response to her comment that everybody else was agreeing with. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. You have to bring the word on things, into things. And that's the thing. Uh, you know, uh, there's a scripture, and I can't remember what it is, but it says that, when well, you know, that we can pray that the eyes, the blinders are removed from people. And, right. um, and I like doing that because, man, that uh, if somebody wanted to look that one up and put it in chat for us, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, same thing. Okay, so yeah, because the God of this world has that power to do that. Satan can do that. But God, in all his glory, um, removes that from us when we choose him, when we make that decision. Mm -hmm. So those blinders come off. And I don't know about you guys, but man, when the blinders came off, I was like in shock of all the whole Bible. Actually, I was, wow, the Old Testament, I was like, whoa. <laughs> So a few stings and things like that. And then, but then the love of God shine came through. So, all right, let's go to question 10 and 11 real quick. According to second Corinthians four, four, the minds of them that don't believe are what? Blinded. Blinded. Yep. And by whom? By Satan. By this world. The power. Yeah. Yep. All right. So uh, let's see. Does someone want to pick up here? The devil is actively at work. That paragraph. The devil is actively at work today, heartening people and blinding them from the truth of the gospel. This is not a passive battle. He aggressively pursuing and trying to destroy people. One of the reasons why the enemies has such a strong hold on so many people is because the church hasn't really recognized the spiritual battle it's in. It's, that's true. Yeah. 3B, what the devil act what is the devil actively at work to do doing? There it is right there, hardening people and by blinding mm -hmm. them from the truths of the gospel. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, this during these times, boy, the, the Christian body, the church, mm -hmm. the Christ, the church of Christ, uh, all of us yeah. need to really be active. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I was it's, I was thinking that there's a there are false gospels out there. You yeah, know, people that do not see things fully as they really are, as Jesus said they are, and that yet they think they're leaders in the Christian community and stuff, but they're the Pharisees of today, basically. Yeah, that's biblical. Christians. That's biblical that there will be a lot of false teachers, you know, mm -hmm. and we, we need to uh, pray for them a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Especially I was praying for the Mormon <laughs> I, I just started praying for the Mormons near me. God gave me faith to do it because my best friends in high school were Mormons and I have a friend back home who's Mormon yeah. and they are really sweet people, but they are deceived. They're missing part of the truth and they've got a, additions to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like my neighbor, she showed me her Bible and it had the Book of Mormon and um, the Pearl of Great Price joseph's yeah. writings they they think they're oh. scripture i tried reading it once some of it and it just was like gobbledygook to me it sounds religious yeah. but it doesn't make much sense because it's not really spirit spoken you know and that's the thing i was thinking you know i was just going to say before you spoke up that we need to pray for those christian leaders specifically by by name you know because yeah. they are having influence out there, you know, and then certainly right. people in our communities around us. Yeah. Right. And so somebody want to read corrupting manners. I'm sorry, Lisa, what'd you say? Instead of just talking about them. Right. Because, you know, let's, what put the, uh, let's put that prayer behind yeah, them. We yeah. should love them as brothers and sisters and pray for them. Yes. Like so corrupting good manners. Who wants to read that? Okay. Um, as a minister of the gospel, I use daily programs on both television and radio to share the truth of God's word all around the world. However, most of the other programs people watch and listen to on television and radio are used of the devil to strengthen his influence and control. Both non-believers and Christians alike are plugged into it and to one degree or another are fed a steady diet of ungodliness, sexual immorality, violence, strife, hatred, and sarcasm. <coughs> we allow this sewage to pour into our homes and Satan uses it in our lives. 
It's not that television or radio are evil in and of themselves. God is using both of them mightily to advance his kingdom. However, Satan is also using the vast majority of its programming to destroy people's lives. Some folks think, oh, I can watch this stuff and it doesn't affect me. God's word says they're deceived. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Okay, let's jump over to Christian 12. Did somebody say something? Go ahead. Okay, what does 1 Corinthians 15, 33 say that evil communication corrupts? Good, good, manners. Manners. good manners. Yes, and I don't, I didn't look that up, but I think that good manners there, like if you go to one of the, um, Oh, the concordance, the study Bibles, whatever, the commentaries, good manners. If somebody has that, like go just jump on blue letter Bible or something and find out what that means for us. I'd really appreciate that because it corrupts our whole life. Evil communications, you know, like so a change wants... of character. pardon, it's like a change of character, change of character. Yep. Corrupts our character. Absolutely. It does. Yep. Okay. Um, Dale, you want to keep reading? Okay. You may convince yourself that you're not being influenced or corrupted, but the word re reveals otherwise. You simply cannot maintain your spiritual equilibrium while indulging your eyes on ungodliness. David, the man after God's own heart, understood this. He said, I set no wicked thing before my eyes. Psalm 101.3. Okay, let's go to Teachers 4A here. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Whoops. <clears throat> I'm looking for 4A. There it is. Okay, in uh, Corinthians 15.30, 1 Corinthians 15.33 and Psalm 101.3, we simply cannot maintain our spiritual equilibrium by doing what? indulging our eyes on ungodliness so this lesson is called no wicked thing so first we were talking about our mouths right and our minds now we're talking about our eyes so indulging our eyes on ungodliness and then this word spiritual equilibrium um what do you guys think about that word i haven't looked it up but you, you know it's like a balance right yeah. spiritual balance and i think that as christians this is my take on this here, <clears throat> scriptures is that especially first corinthians 15 33 let me go to that um Okay, so, oh, that's, okay, evil communications, corrupt good manners, and like, uh, I forget who said that, but his character, right, our character. Okay, so that equilibrium, then, I see it as being, um, you know, as Christians, we want to toggle towards the side of the Lord, right, and not of the world, and the evil one. So, um, to maintain, then, our, uh, our spiritual equilibrium really means to be as full, I mean, but you know, we have the whole power of God inside us. We have his power. We have the Holy Spirit's discernment. We have all these things that live inside us, you know, to keep us, to keep not just an, in my mind, not just an equilibrium, but really um, just um, godliness, you know, every second of our day. And, you know, I heard someone said, well, they said to me, well, you know, we have the, all the Proverbs and we have all the wisdom of God. So we really don't have to rely on the Holy Spirit that much because we're expected to know the Proverbs and to live that way. And I thought to myself, well, we can know the wisdom of the whole word of God, but we need the Holy Spirit's influence on us too. Amen. You know, we yeah. need it all. So, yeah. uh, so when it comes to evil communication and then, you know, what we're le letting in our eyes, to, for our eyes to see it's everything i think it's our whole life you know yeah isn't, isn't that isn't that equilibrium like um straddling the fence you know yeah. uh, you know like a teeter-totter straddling the fence and, yeah. and then it's like what you were saying uh like moses said whose side are, are you gonna link you know whose side are you on Okay, yeah, yeah. either on one side or the other, but equilibrium is kind of like straddling the fence, like a teeter totter. And, and sure, yeah, sure, sure. I like to add that, um, that's a great analogy, 
because you you're dealing with with two things here, mm -hmm. with teeter tottering. You're dealing with two things, and the things that I'm referring to here is double mindedness, and and yeah. God and God says, <laughs> the man is not going to receive anything from him with double mind. No, you you you, you can't you can't be both ways. You can't be both ways. You no. can't be on the fence. Right. Yeah, I've heard of people when you mentioned fence, uh, Cheryl. I thought, oh yeah, people are. Um, you know, they're either in the kingdom or they're in the world, you know, they teeter totter mm -hmm. back and forth and it doesn't serve them well because I've watched their lives. You know, that's how I used to be too. Yeah. Well, me, all of us have been there. <laughs> I think so. Okay. I'd like, I'd like to say something, you know, when, when in, in the last time when he was talking about how, because um, I made it back, y'all, I had to, what I had to do. Oh, but, good, Charmaine. Anyway, I was like, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, when he talks about how uh, we have to be careful what we see in the television programs and everything. I was the other day looking at uh, Netflix and I just happened to click on the kids section of Netflix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They got more witches out there. Yeah. And more sure. warlock stories and more uh, gay, transgender, I mean, on children in the kids' section. Yeah. You know, and even the, uh, the, the little cartoon characters all looking like gargoyles and, and some kind of demon looking thing. Yeah. You know, you're right. Um, Y'all need to Deal pay attention with that at to home. Those. Yeah, and that's that's what we're letting our children be exposed to and our grandchildren and stuff. We need to be mindful of things like that. And what are we watching? Yeah. Yeah. That's the most important. Right? Mm -hmm. right. What are we watching? Right. Yeah. right. And Shame, and, and, and I have seen situations where the leader uh, be, be, become side by side with the, with the lead and they and they and they indulge just as much as they as, as the one they're trying to teach yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. not only the parents, uh, the netflix the parents, film i'm sorry not only the netflix film but all these video games that kids are really watching and it's yeah. doesn't end like 17 18 year old kids are still into all of this what is it call of duty and I don't know. It's just ridiculous. Well, and the thing um, that comes to my mind is that um, in all of this with the kids, even my grandkids, even they're, they're like four years old and they're saying, oh, I have superpowers. I have magic powers. And, mm -hmm. and I'm going to decide how I'm going to be with my powers. And I'm like, oh my gosh, get them to catechism or, you know, get them to the church. So, yeah. We'll talk to them, you know, oh, yeah. discuss it with we them. We do. And yeah. why you don't want them watching or yeah. believing in that. Yeah, that you have to reason. Some but, but, there's, but there's times there's times when people are, you know, they've got one side on the fence when when you talk about teetering and totting. Mm -hmm. Um the the call of duty, they don't feel it's bad. You know, they don't realize that they're on the other side of the fence. Um and even these shows and and parents go Oh, it's just a it's just a cartoon, you know. And then it, if you really reflect about the the anger and, and dysfunction between like Tom and Jerry, I just saw a, a new movie that's coming out about Tom and Jerry, and you know just the things that we used to what we used to watch as kids, yeah. and we and we thought nothing bad of it. But now you start reflecting on it, is that it was all about hurting and at someone else's expenses, you know? Yeah. Are, at that point, are we on the other side of the fence? You know what I mean? As, <laughs> as kids being, you know, I mean, Satan has just has this ultimate plan that he's be just, you know, he, when he gets an inch, yeah, he, he, that's all he needs, you know, just a sharp edge of a hatchet, just to break into the wood. And eventually you'll split all the way through it, you yeah. know, and, and that's his plan just a little bit of a time. And that's why we have to stay focused on what God has for us so that we know that where we stand, I mean, uh, right. Trish and myself do not watch a lot of TV. It's just bad. 
Yeah. So it's like, it isn't worth the time. No. Okay, so That's let's see. Right. We're at half an hour left. I don't know, a little more than that good. Just want to get through this lesson. So we're going to keep rolling. Yeah. Did somebody want to say a quick comment? I heard a voice. Yes, yeah. yes, Keith. Okay. Uh, um, they, yeah, um, just, just to, to endorse on what Tony was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the scripture said, out of the abundance, I'm um, sorry, of the, the heart, the mouth speaketh. And also, you need to guard your heart Amen. for out of a flood of issues of life. So right. the eyes and the ears are gates to the heart and the mind. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful yeah. what we open these gates to. Right. And we're coming up on that right now. So I'll, I'll take over reading. Okay, you may convince yourself that you're not being influenced or corrupted, but the word reveals otherwise. You simply cannot maintain your... Oh, we already read it. Sorry, you guys. Yeah. Um, okay, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes, Psalm 101.3. Mm -hmm. So let's go to question 13. In Psalm 101.3, what does the psalmist hate? Wicked things. Yeah, wicked things. Yep. As we're all talking about, yep. As a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to make the same commitment saying, I will not watch anything wicked. I refuse to paint a picture on the inside of me of lust, anger, immorality, hatred, strife, or murder. I recognize that every time I open myself up to such things, there is a negative spiritual power there waiting to gain an inroad into my life. By God's grace, I will not give the devil any access into my life. So like Tony was saying, we decided not to watch much TV. Now there is a show that um, sometimes I flip to <laughs> like, you know, it's uh, have you guys heard of the golden girls? I, I just want to laugh before I go to bed. Okay. <laughs> I just want to relax. Oh my gosh. You know, I can't be watching that though. I know, you know, and so, um, you know, I'm going to have to find something else. It's not all the time. It's once in a while. And but, you know, they, they just, that was that show that Satan used, I think, to bring in all the ungodly um, things back in, when was it, the 70s or something? I mean, that was when they started introducing, oh, they had to face so much ungodliness, right? Oh, you know, like um, gay, lesbian couples, um, you know, uh, racism. Um, and, and what they did is they painted it where they worked through all of it, you know? But that grandma, her mouth, oh my gosh, it's so ungodly, you know? So, yeah, I mean, that's just, you know, over the last 50 years, TV has just gone down. Yeah. All right. So let's see, yes. painting pictures. Yes. I, I, I don't know. I, uh, you know, I had the, tele, the, tele, the telephone. I have the uh, cell phone. The words are in the right-hand corner. Could you put it in the middle? Because sometimes oh, I can't yeah, see something else face. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can someone help me with that? What do, what do we need? Maybe just shrink the, um, the font. Okay. A little bit, because it's, it's, it's on the side, it's too big for the page. Is that better, you guys? Or can you move it to the, um, which would, I'm not sure if it'd be your left. We're not seeing the word, like I could see society is because they're, and then, there we go. Can you guys see it now? Perfect. It's, can everybody else see it? Yeah. Oh, I, I guess it's just my phone. I guess so too. Can you see it like, now, Mary? She moved yeah. it over. You know what? It's in the right. It's, it's in the very small. small. I can see it. Yeah. Mary, it may be in your gallery view or how you have that set up some kind yeah. of way. You know what? It was always in the middle. So I don't know. You know, it just went to that. You know, so, okay. But anyway, no, I'm going to let y'all finish. Because okay. a lot of times I want to read and I can't read because of the, uh, I really just need a computer. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's okay. for you. Okay. So painting like pictures. That. What you might want to do is uh, step out of the side by side view and, yeah. and, and take it to the top so that make it a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, if you step yeah. out of the side view. Mary. Oh, I, I don't even know how to do that. That's so oh, y'all okay. continue. Okay. Thank y'all. Because you got it inside view, huh, Trish? No. I don't. Okay. Fine. It was fine before. I don't know if that's like Mary said, it might be because of something in a phone. Oh, yeah. God. right. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to continue on with painting pictures. One of the reasons we have so much violence and immorality in our society is because there's so much violence and immorality on television. These images are painting pictures in the hearts and minds of people who are then going out and acting on them. We can't be tempted by what we don't think. That's Hebrews eleven fifteen. 
We'll read that in just a second. However, what we constantly think about will become what we talk about and do. Everything you say and or do is releasing either God's or Satan's power in your life. Your enemy in, is in an active force at work in the world, seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5, 8. We'll go over these in just a minute, you guys. He, he blinds the minds of those who don't believe in order to steal, kill, and destroy them. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Just putting your head in the sand and saying, I don't believe we're in a battle. I'm going to just continue on the way I've been isn't going to change the situation. It just means that you'll be one of the casualties. It's to your advantage to recognize the reality of the fight and make the necessary adjustments in your thinking and lifestyle. So here where it says we can't be tempted by what we don't think. However, we, what we constantly think about will become what we talk about and do. So let's read Hebrews 11:15. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had an opportunity to have returned. So that is talking about when we, well, let me go to the questions first, just a second. Uh, I have to see which one it was. Teachers 4B. Okay. What will become when we, what will become what we talk about and do? What we think about constantly. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And so going back to this scripture, Hebrews. Okay, so this is when um, the Israelites were in the desert and they kept, okay, remember they were murmuring about, oh, why does Moses take us here? All we have is manna to eat. And what, they were complaining about everything. Like they had better, like they were better off back in um, Egypt, you know? And so it says, because they were thinking about that, they might have re ended up returning there had they been able to continue with all that complaining. But God always, you know, took care of that. Every time something they were doing that, he always punished them somehow, you know. And you guys can comment on all this, but that's my take on it. You know, had they been able to continue on with their murmuring, they by the words that they were speaking, they would have ended up back in slavery. And that's the same with us. By what we speak and do, we're going to go back. We can very easily revert to carnal, Christian carnality or, you know, being um, more worldly minded. Right. And Christ-minded, so yeah. comment on that. Yeah. Okay, so this one here, everything you say and do is releasing either God or Satan's power. So let's go to First Peter five eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So he's just uh, roaming around, seeing where he can get an inroad. Right. So teacher's guide mm -hmm. 5A, let's go there. Yeah. Read first paper. Uh, well, we'll read all three of these in a minute. Everything we say and do is releasing what? Either God. Either God's or Satan's power in our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Death or okay. life. So Corinthians 4.4, 4. let's find that one. There it is. Second, was that second Corinthians? No, 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 no. Yeah. Hey, Trish, yeah, you're doing yeah. a great job. Oh, thanks. <laughs> in in sure. whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. We already looked at that one. Yep. And so, you know, because uh, Satan has the uh, power to blind the uh, minds of them who don't believe in Christ, right. um, you know, they're, boy, they're, they're in a battle, too. Uh, let's see, and the next one we're supposed to read is First Peter 5, 8. I don't think we read that, did we? There it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's going to be going around trying to uh, seek who he may devour. And, you know, it's biblical that, you know, in the end times that Satan is going to be, you know, there's going to be so many things like um, splitting families apart. You know, we, we've had, we, our family was attacked. And we were in the world. We didn't know. We had just come out of the world. Actually, we we're still in the world. We had a major attack on our family. And boy, you know, thank God for God. That's all I can say. Thank God we found him. Amen. Amen. So let's go Amen through to question. that. Yep. Amen. Question 14 along these lines says, according to 1 Peter 5, 8, who is our adversary? The devil. The devil. The devil. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The devil. 
I know. Okay. So putting your head in the sand and saying, I, I don't believe we're in a battle. And I think that is so prevalent today. People don't realize the battle we're in. You know, we're not in heaven. We're on the earth and Satan is the prince of this earth. So it's, it's a constant battle. But if we're in Christ, we have so much hope. You know, we don't have to be living in fear because we have the whole armor of God, you know. Okay, Amen. so we are, we are responsible to submit to God and resist the devil, James 4, 7. Our thoughts, I'm going to go read that right now, James 4, 7. It just dawned on me that submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So there's our hope. As we, as we resist him, he has to flee. Amen. Our thoughts, emotions, words, and actions are either giving place to God or giving place to the devil. And it says here, emotions, words, and actions. So that's a big part of who we are. That's how we operate, you know. So Ephesians oh, 4, 27. Yeah. And our body. Yep. Neither give place to the devil. That sounds like a pretty much of a command to me. You yep. know, it's for our own good, though. You know, not to give place to him. Mm -hmm. Because if we, if we give place to him in our own lives, we can't be a help to anybody else. You yeah. know? So... You know, Go ahead. You know, when you uh, when it says uh, if we submit ourselves to God and resist the devil, then the devil has to flee. And so the the act of submitting to God first, yeah, okay. Uh, resist means to actively fight against. Resist means to actively fight against the devil. Then he will flee. When we get on these Bible studies, on these discipleship classes, you are submitting to God. Amen. That is an act of submission to God. When you open that word or you start speaking in tongues or you call for prayer or whatever, you are actively submitting to God's leadership and his, his lordship in your life. And that is an actively resisting the devil. But, the, right. you know, we, so, so far we've seen where the, the devil comes against our mind. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't blind our eyes. That's that right. scripture doesn't say he blinds our eyes. He says he blinds no. our mind. So as Good we point. resist the devil, we got to, because it says in there, it says our thoughts, emotions, words, and actions. We're talking about the soulless realm. You know, the soul is where he's going to be trying to, uh, to, to fight against us. So we got to give that place to God and not give it to the devil. What Amen. are you thinking about? You know, that's what this is all about. Let no wicked thing come to your mind. Yeah, there's yeah. one thing I think we need to think about is our imagination. That's basically the crown of your head where that part of your brain is. And I did a study on this because I spoke on it in the Bible. It's called your yetzer. It's the spiritual womb in the Hebrew. So it's where things come to birth, good or bad through our imagination and that's why the enemy is trying to use it against us you know through lisa, television etc lisa yeah. I, I you know when i think about that i think about not only our imagination but he he attack us in our memory in in, in our memory what we what the things that we recall what right. were you were you were you who you think you are you 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 the a, a wino you are uh, an alcoholic right. you know those things for memory you know and, and and god says not to focus on those things right. not to focus on them amen mm -hmm. and that's why pornography is so dangerous also because it gets into your imagination and you can't get it out without yeah. god helping you to renew your mind you know right um yeah, I think that um, our whole mind, it's a good good study just to um, see how much of an influence I was talking about this, I don't know, if, I think it was last week or the week before about how our subconscious is so um, prevalent in our lives. And that's what you guys are talking about, those yeah. memories, yeah. So I, teachers I, got, I, hmm? I'm, I'm so, okay, go ahead. No, what were you gonna say, Charmaine? No, I was gonna say in that the next that paragraph where it talks about when you live in a life in opposition to God, yeah, you know, you know, that means your mind is is totally you you've decided that my my life and everything is gonna go with the devil. 
I'm giving place to the devil, okay? Because I've, I've decided I want to live my life in opposition to God. And then people want to know, well, why is the devil attacking me? Duh. Yeah. You know, oh, because you made the decision you made, yeah. Now, can you say that slower? A life in opposition? I want to read about that. It's right here. It's in the paragraph right here. That it says, while living a life in opposition to God, they come up to me and say, I don't understand why the devil is after me. Yeah, but when you, you said living a life in opposition to God, that means you're that means you're, you're giving place to the devil instead in your of giving mind. place to God in your mind. In your mind. Okay. Yeah. Intentionally yeah. you make a decision that okay. I, I don't want to. I don't want to do God what God wants me to do. I want to do what I want to do, which is usually what the devil wants you to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and then you want to come and say, well, because um, if you put them two paragraphs together, right there, that's what I'm saying. Uh, them, the, the, that one with teaches God five B and the one right below. It. Yeah. Yeah. And those two right there are are. You know, you got to make up a, a decision. You're either going to go with God or you're going to go with the devil. When you play with the devil, you need to, some of us need to stay on the porch because you can't run with the big dog. Come on. That's right. That's right. Come because on. the big dog, you're going gonna to get to take you out. That's yeah. Right. You think so it's. That's bad. right. We need to keep keep getting in that word until, until we can stand against that, come against Renew that. our mind. That's Learn right. how to do Renew it. Renew your yeah. mind. Yeah. Keep yeah. coming to these classes. Well, right. Exactly. Yeah. And so, take every thought captive and make it obedient. Yeah. When you get up every in the morning, day. put on your armor. Yeah. All right, now. Every day. Amen. So, Tony, I'm going to have you. Hallelujah. I'm going to have you put on our armor in just a minute, Tony. I'll have you demonstrate that real quick in a minute. But let's go here to five A. Or was it five A? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Five B. It was five B. Five B. Okay. So. Who is responsible to submit to God and resist the devil? We are. We are. Yeah. Yep. And no one then, has to do it for us. We have to individually do it. That's our responsibility. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And number 15 here, uh, we're going to look at James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yeah. That's and the, um, it tells us to submit ourselves to whom? To God. God. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, How do we do that, Trish? How do we submit ourselves to God? Yeah, when we're being tempted, basically. Oh man, just take your mind right to the Holy Spirit. Just go there, Lord. I don't. I I need your help to overcome this right now. Give me some options and just be quiet for a few seconds. He'll get you if you know the word. The word's going to come out. You know, there's going to be something you'll be reminded of. I believe that. I've seen it. Any other comments on that? How do we submit yeah, to God? You know, Trish. Yeah. <laughs> I I kind of I I kind of it's kind of funny, but I say, what are you doing here? <laughs> get out of here, devil! You gotta get away from me, cause God said. There you go, cause God right. said, and that word comes out of your mouth. Amen. That's right. That's right. You remember <laughs> last? Remember in our in our lesson we learned. I don't know which one we we listened to so many where it talks about wait we got nowhere to put our butt. Yeah. <laughs> No, right. we got nowhere to put our butt. Yeah, in other words, right. the problem, the problem might be one thing. You, you you address the problem. Okay, I'm having this, I'm being tempted by by this by this this old, old boyfriend. Okay. Right. Yeah. But 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 God shall supply, on. please protect me. I am under the protection of the Holy Spirit, whatever. But da, 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 da. don't yeah. go, don't go, don't fit the uh the the solution. Like saying, God, I need you to help me, but he coming to get me. He trying to get me, God. Uh uh. No. You speak the problem, put your butt, and emphasize on your solution. There you go. That's you what know, I mean. You that's how you person. resist the devil. Don't don't yeah. hit with the negative because that'll be the thing that you're thinking on. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, when I said that, when I said I go to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me here. I meant like, okay, bring the scriptures up. I'm, I need to apply the word here. Yeah, that's, right. that's what I meant. Not like, help me, save me from this. You do it. I don't want to do it. No, no, no. We are responsible for what we know, right? That's and we right. have the power to overcome those situations by the blood of that's the land. Right. Okay. So, and the word of the test. I feel like if he's bold with me, 
I'm going to be bold with him. Well, amen. Amen. he's a speck in the <laughs> universe, for gosh sakes. We have all I the think, power of Christ inside us. I think one thing I remember as a new believer, when God gave me that scripture to break a bondage in my life, yeah. I realized it was a demon for the first time because <laughs> yeah. it manifested and I could discern it because I was born again, finally, at 18 years old. But I just realized I needed to get angry. And God gave me a holy, righteous anger against yep. that. And I, I yelled at it, which at the time I was still in the Methodist church. That's not a common United Methodist thing to do, I don't think. Though I don't know what they're doing in their, in their prayer closets, you know. Some right. Of them. Yeah. It's, it's amazing because um, when we're in those times of temptation, um, and we're thinking, and that's the thing, so many believers, they, uh, as they're learning, it's a process we're talking about, but no wicked thing has any power over us. Okay. It's nothing. And so, um, we can, oh, Tony's going to do the armor of God for us in a few okay. minutes. I just want to get through the lesson and we'll have him do that. And okay. so, um, yeah, that we have all of that. So, okay. So are you married? This is the last section. One time I had a man in our church come out to shoe my horse. While he was doing that, we, we began talking and he kept referring to his girlfriend. I'd seen him at church with this woman and thought she was his wife. However, the way he kept talking about his girlfriend led me to believe they weren't married. So finally, I just asked him, are you married? He answered, oh, no, we're just living together. We had, we've had so many friends that married and divorced that we think it's wisdom to live together for a while and see if we should get married <laughs> or not. And it's been about six months now. Immediately, I asked, are, I thought you said you were a Christian. Well, I am. I was born again four months ago. Don't you realize the, that living together is contrary to God's word? This guy was like, was a brand new believer and totally ignorant. You mean God says something about just living with a person before you get married? So I started sharing the word with him. After a little while, he said, well, we love each other and we're going to get married. So it'll be okay. And I had to explain to him, it doesn't matter what's going to happen in the future. Right now, you are living in a way that exempts you from God's power. You have yielded yourself to Satan and have violated God's word. By doing so, you have released demonic power in your life. The devil is just having a heyday with you. Hmm. So I thought that was the last one, but this is. <laughs> yeah, any comments on that? Don't get off the porch if you can't play with the devil, if you can't run with the big dog. Yeah. Don't don't go out there and jump into that relationship and 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 open a door for that demonic spirit, them demonic forces. Right. You know, guard yourself. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, awesome. One of my pa pastors, when I met my husband, he's an evangelist. So we had a lot of people getting saved, and several of them were still in living in, you know premarital sex situations and and he went over to this couple's house when the lord instructed him to do it he prayed first but he took his bible and he just read the scriptures to them about it and explained it to them in love and he told them they need to pray about whether they're going to get married or not he explained that to them and and there's a scripture that says talks about marrying the virgin that you've <laughs> anyway they ended up getting married it, it worked they listened because they were young believers and they wanted to follow the lord but they didn't know you know yeah and i think that's the key too is to speak the truth in love you know and just give them the facts you know um without any condemnation or anything like that i mean andrew's talk with that guy you know um, there's a few exclamation points here, but you know, Andrews tells it like it is, you know, and so we don't know the outcome of this story, but certainly the guy is put on notice. There's more to it than you think, you know, I, all right. I, I, just, you know, a quick thought is that, you know, it isn't, it's like a lot of us have to really stay on the porch when it comes to what our weakness is, because there's weaknesses in, in all different walks and all different people, you know, uh, living together with someone, but, you know, uh, road rage, uh, overeating, all these things. We all have our own little vice that, you know, the, the wicked one is always trying to grab at our weaknesses. He knows them. Yeah. And we have to, that's where the armor 
and the and ourselves have to stay strong in the word because you know um that's why we all just fall short and that's why why we all need jesus and, I'll yeah, leave it and i think and we've learned in this lesson too that though as we resist the devil will flee yes as we, as we use all our power all the power of god and all the tools he's given us and his word he will flee Yep. And he may come back to try and pest you in some other way. But again, you just stand. You just continue to resist. Trish, okay. Right. So Trish, let's go here. Yeah. Trish, um, I have heard someone say, um, when you're ignorant, when you're ignorant, nonsense works in your life. Yeah. Non non I nonsense has a place. Nonsense has a place in your life when you're ignorant. Yeah. The ignorant, ignorant of God's word. Ignorance is a lack of knowledge. Not and, and God's people perish for lack of knowledge. That's scripture. If you don't know God's word, it is definitely nonsense that you believe. It. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. It's, it's craziness. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, yeah. It, okay. it says it, you can only understand spiritual things if you have the spirit. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's the, right. Natural man, the natural man to them, what we're talking about right now, to an mm -hmm. unsaved person, is foolishness mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's they don't right. They can't connect the dots. Yeah, they can't. Yeah, they don't have any reference point, you know, to, to they can't weigh it against anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. that's why we, and when we learned in God wants to, how to pray for the lost, we pray, we know that the enemy is blinding their mind. Mm -hmm. So we pray that God would give them clarity of mind. Right, right. Yeah. right. Clarity right. of mind, just for a moment, so that when they mm -hmm. do hear this kind of word, that mm -hmm. God, they know that this is the word of God. Amen. Yeah. And, and they're not listening to the nonsense. Mm -hmm. Yep, they'll have a witness to it too. They'll know it's the truth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. And to, that, and to that point, in the last section that we talked about, the most important thing Andrew did there was he said he started sharing the word with him. Yeah. So that's where the power is. The word. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Don't give them. Second. Don't give them the, our opinions. You want me to read, Trish? Sure, go for it. Follow God's instructions. As we continued talking, he began to open up his heart. Usually it takes 30 minutes to shoe a horse, but this one took three hours. <laughs> he was just soaking it up. This brother changed his mind, moved out, and then straightened up their act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you disobey God, you open up a door to the devil. Contrary to what religion says, God still loves you. Yeah. Even though you didn't open the door for the devil, he's not mad at you, but he wants better for you. Yeah. By violating God's instructions in his word and obeying the lust of your flesh, you're going to, you've thrown open the door to the devil. Satan will come in and eat your lunch and pop the bag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. You need to change your mind and adjust your actions. Yeah. We're in a spiritual battle. And you can't afford the luxury of just ignoring the instructions God has given you. Yeah. That's right. And so we did find out the outcome of that story. So praise God. Praise God. Yes. The word came forth and, and he was enlightened. So mm -hmm. let's go to Teacher's Guide 6A. How do we open up a door for the devil? When we disobey God. Yeah. Yep. And 6B, what do we need to do? Change, Change our minds and adjust our actions. Yes, that's it. Adjust our actions, yep. Okay, so Tony, do you want to go through this, the um, armor of God for us today? And I say one thing before we say that, but in yeah. reference to that one right there. Oh, sure. The key, the key is change your mind, then adjust your actions. Yes. Thoughts, the tap, T-A-C, thoughts, <clears throat> actions, results, and consequences. Most of the time, we tell people that they need to uh, change their actions. Yes. Quit smoking. Quit drinking. Clean up their act. Right. You, yeah. you got you to gotta start living right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you want God's blessings, you better knock that off, you know. And what, what, what happened here is... <clears throat> Okay, and, all right. And and so what happens here is this man made a decision, but he made a decision after he's, 
he changed his mind of hearing the word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then his actions came. He just didn't quit because somebody told him you need to move out. You can't live with that girl. Did, did you, you know, do you think do you think the two of them discussed it since they were both newly born Christians that they wanted to walk with God and God laid it on their hearts of how strong that they need to be yeah. and that they would have a covenant, a better covenant with him if That's they right. went his way rather than their way. You know what I That's mean? That's right. Yeah. You're right, Tony. Yeah. Um, yes. uh, to to add to what you were saying, the thought first, the thought first in 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 uh, the change of mind and 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 the consequences, whatever. Well, you he you a person can actually go down, Trish. A person can oh. actually on the on the slide. I think it's on it. Uh, which one? Oh, okay, sure. Go ahead, uh, yeah, yeah. A person, a person can actually change their behavior, and and not have their heart in it, not have their heart in it. Yeah, it's uh, not have their heart. They change, try and change their habits in twenty one days, or uh, they listen uh, to audios. I'm gonna change my mind, my attitude. And, 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 and what and what I'm saying is, is that, is that David, David had true repentance. There's such a thing as true repentance. True repentance. Yes. Oh, 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 you've heard people talking about going through the motions. How many people go through the motions, and 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 maybe they're saying, "Well, um, I, I'm going to get I'm going to get fire insurance because I don't want to go to hell." Right. But do yeah. you want to be obedient? Yeah, that's true. it's a process. They get yeah, there eventually. <laughs> Tony, you gonna do the armor first? Yeah. Sure. Okay. I'm, I'm. This is out of Ephesians. Oh. Wait one second, Tony. Can you hold just a second? Um, sure. I forgot a couple of these PowerPoints. That's okay. Let him do the arm. The armor? You sure? Yeah. This is yeah. good stuff. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'll do it real quick. I refuse to speak forth, and then we're gonna. I want to invite people to receive Christ too. So, a few things here. Okay, I refuse to refuse to speak forth anything contrary. You can't to see I, it. You can't. Uh, uh you're not sharing. Really? You were sharing it earlier, though. Yeah. Can you okay. see it? No, I'm yeah. No, I'm okay. I refuse to speak forth anything contrary to what I'm believing for. That's a decision we make, right? Uh -huh. okay. The wrong thing to say, I'm believing for a miracle, but, and then you encounter it with the problem when you start examining and explaining all the bad things, you've just destroyed what you're trying to accomplish. Like, you know, oh, I'm believing for my miracle, but I was just at the doctor and now there's more spots on my lungs, you know? Next one. Um, you know, don't speak the solution, then counter it with the problem. Right. That's right. And somebody was just saying on here a few minutes ago, don't talk about the negative, right? Right. So the right way to say it. You can say there are problems, but then counter it with what you really are believing it for. for you know, mm. Exa example, hey, I've got a problem. I'm fighting this sickness, but then you counter it with the truth of God's word. But I believe I'm healed in Jesus name. So you're speaking out your victory. Right. Do, do speak the problem, then counter it with the solution. That's right. If you have to speak it, you know, sometimes you can't even get away with not doing that. Okay. Uh, number, this is the last one. God's way. This is tack. Mm -hmm. Thoughts, then actions, and then consequences. Made right by God the right way. Act, A-C-T, man's way. Change your wow. actions, then the consequences follow, and your thoughts Yes, act right in your, and we've talked about that. We were just talking mm -hmm. about that. So you guys get the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Tony, you want to go ahead with the armor? Sure. This okay. is in Ephesians uh, 6, and I believe it starts uh, Ephesians 6, 13. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the, when the day that the evil one comes, which he's always attacking us, Maybe you'll be, you may, you will, it says you may be able to stand your ground. I, I believe we will be able to stand our ground because that's what it says in Jesus name. We've done everything to stand. We stand firm with the belt of, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet filtered, take up uh, with your feet fitted with the readiness to comes 
with the gospel of peace, in addition to take up the shield of faith and extinguish so with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows from the evil one, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Which Amen. Helps, Amen. Which Amen. helps you with the word of God. Mm -hmm. So Amen. I'm going to demonstrate that in 10 seconds or less, okay? So this is in the morning I do this. Lord God, I put on my helmet of salvation. I receive everything that you gave me through the atonement, <laughs> Father, the forgiveness of sins, um, the, the full uh, prosperity and the um, the deliverance from the demonic and um, and I forget the other one, you guys, because I'm doing it in front of you. <laughs> ah. And I put on my breastplate of righteousness. That's um, the, the right standing with God that I can have confidence in all day long. I put on my belt of truth. That's the truth of the word. Father, I have the truth. The sandals of the gospel of peace, Lord, that I have a word in season. The moment the gospel needs to come forth, it will come out of my mouth. I thank mm. you for that, Lord. I put on my double-edged sword. I, I, I can slash that devil all day long because I rightly divide the word and I put on my shield of faith and thank you father for keeping me in that place of faith in you all day long amen amen amen, amen. amen. I like the way you did it thank you okay so let's do um I just want to invite anybody who hasn't received Jesus as their lord and savior to repeat this simple prayer after me and I just set it down. Where did I put it? Oh, oh, no, I've got it. Here it is. I could do it by heart, but let's do it this formal way, way today. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So um, if you haven't made a decision to um, accept Jesus, now's your chance. And um, so let's pray out loud. Um, you guys can repeat after me. Jesus. 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 I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I confess, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart. I believe, I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. But God, God raised you from the dead. By faith in your word, by faith, by faith in, in your, your word, word, I receive salvation. I receive, I receive salvation, salvation. Healing, 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 prosperity, prosperity, prosperity and deliverance from the demonic. And, and deliverance from the, from the demonic. Thank you for saving me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 You are now in the kingdom of God, and you have the Spirit of God living inside you. Yes. Congratulations. And the blinders on your mind are now taken off. So, Amen. All right. Life will never be the same. Okay. Well, thanks for coming on, you guys, today. Um, it's been wonderful. And yeah. So, Denise, <laughs> do you want to take us off of Facebook then? Um, and then um, anybody who wants to ask any questions or something, I'll stay on for about five minutes here. You want to talk about anything else? Charmaine, I think you still have to do that. Okay, Trish, you the host. Oh, am I? Yeah, oh. in the lower right-hand corner where it says more. Yes. Okay, click on uh, create.